Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird, and welcome back to Lynn. Let's just, just continue. Um, 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 um. This is <clears throat> Hey Lynn, it's been a while since I last saw you in your uniform. Oh, hey Jazz. I give my sister an awkward smile. I don't want to smile awkwardly, of course. Who does? But after my dream last night, it's a little hard to act completely natural. You alright? You look kind of pale. I'm fine. I'll live. Heh. You sure? Jazz smirks and takes a bite out of her toast. It's smeared with strawberry jam. The bright red against the brown toast makes me think not of blood, but something far more sinister. Charred flesh. Ew. Oh, I have 90% stress. Wow. The thick smell of freshly toasted bread that lingers in the kitchen doesn't help. Here's a top tip from a girl who failed all her GCSEs. Don't pass out in the exam hall. I won't. That's what they all say, but there's always one kid who passes out every year. Always. I is that true? Mm. I mean, it happened in my school year. There was a kid who passed out in the maths exam. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was pretty funny, honestly. Mm. I think Jazz is trying to lighten the mood, but she's not exactly filling me with confidence. Funny thing is, he wasn't a stupid kid, not like me. He was smart. He studied a lot. Maybe that's why. Jazz ponders. Her lips are encrusted with a fine film of toast crumbs. Maybe smart kids put too much pressure on themselves. When they don't do as well as they want, they freak out. As for me. Jazz shrugs. She smiles. I knew I was gonna fail everything, so I never really bothered. It didn't seem like there was any point in worrying. Even though Dad kept pushing you? Even so, I know what my limits are. Maybe you just didn't try hard enough. I didn't try at all! You shouldn't sound so cheerful about it. I know, I know, it pisses Dad off too. I can see why, but... well... Dad works in construction, not mom works at a checkout. We don't come from a smart family. I'm not a smart girl. I have no illusions of greatness. That's why dad wants us to succeed. Well, I'm plenty happy living my life without amounting to anything. Thank you very much. But what about society? Society? What have they done for me recently? And Jazz laughs. Fuck it all, it doesn't matter. Jazz sounds proud. She sounds proud about everything, even the things she probably shouldn't be proud about. Dad, Dad tells Jazz she should be ashamed of herself. She isn't, though. Jazz is stronger than that. She Jazz always says that she doesn't have a single ounce of shame in her body. Maybe that's a good thing. It means she doesn't have to worry. Not like me. I worry about everything. You can't drop the ball on this one, Lynn. Go and make Dad proud and don't pass out. FYI, that kind of fucks up your chances. I'll keep it in mind. I peer into the bread bin even though I don't want any toast. I'm worried if I have any breakfast, I'll throw up on the train. Vomiting over a young child would be far, far worse than knocking into them with my school bag. And it doesn't matter anyway. There are only crusts left. God damn it. <coughs> Invig invigilator? Alright, you may pick up your pens and open your papers. Your exam has now begun. A flurry of noise surrounds me. Hundreds, I think there are more there are around two hundred kids in my year of maths exam papers are opened up and smoothed out by manicured fingers and bitten nails alike. I'm a little slower to start than the rest of my peers. I jolt. It feels like a screwdriver has been inserted into the base of my neck. What am I doing? I'm doing nothing. 
I'm sitting here staring dumbly at the clock mounted on the wall. Our school is a little outdated. We do our exams in this old gym hall that hasn't been refurbished since 1980. It smells of dust and old sweat. The windows are small and high up. They only let in the barest minimum of light. I feel like I'm in a prison. A prison filled with rows upon rows of desks and chairs with over 200 teenage boys and girls poring over their maths exam paper. I was entered for the higher tier paper. I should have been doing foundation. My teacher had too many expe expectations. I think he was spurred on by my dad's fervent insistences during parents' evening that I'm the smart one in the family. Sometimes in a few of the in a few of the practice papers I did in class, I managed to get B's. Sometimes being once. The rest of the time, I got C's or D's. Susie's is the Susie's. That's okay. Susie's is. You. You. You can't have Susie's, right next to an is. Susie is a second set for math. Susie's is a second set for math. Okay, this, sorry, that just does not. Ugh. <sighs> okay, Susie's is a second set for math, and though she hardly ever studies, she ever studies, she's never received anything less than a B. Life isn't fair. Speaking of Susie. Her last name is Hi Hastings. She's sitting a couple of seats in front of me. I can see her brown pigtails bouncing as she peers through her book booklet. Her pen, overly cute and pale pink, glints beneath the dim lights. She's writing. Only five minutes have elapsed, but it looks like she's finished the first couple of pages already. And I'm doing nothing. Ahem. <laughs> One of the invigilators clears his throat. I shift suddenly guilty. The invisible screwdriver applies even greater pressure to the base of my neck. Does it look like I'm cheating? I hope it doesn't look like I'm cheating. I open out my exam but look and stare. Random groups of numbers stare back at me, broken up with dotted lines for me to write down my answers. I have to pick up my pen. I have to gather my senses. I have to start writing. But I can't. My brain freezes. The questions near the beginning of the exam paper aren't even that difficult. I've never had issues with the, any issues with these before. Find the perimeter of the shape. What is the circumference of the circle? Plot the line of best fit. It's not hard. I've answered questions like these before. But I can't now. For some reason, nothing makes sense anymore. My breath catches in my chest, the whole world around me spins. I feel like I might fall from my chair, but the act of falling requires too much energy. All I can do is slump. I press one hand against my chest, my fingers are shaking. I'm too anxious to even raise my hand. I don't think I could walk to the toilet even if I did get permission, which is unlikely. I, the head investigator is... Invigil... Sorry, investigator. Invig... Invig... Vigilator. Vigilator. It's pretty scary. I don't want to deal with her. I don't want to deal with any of this. God, but how disappointed will Dad be? They'll all be so disappointed that I turned out to be an idiot. The biggest idiot. Ten years of education, and for what? I'm wasting it. I can't believe I'm wasting everything. Susie's pale pink bent pen pop. Susie's pale pink pen bobs. It catches in the light. I like the alliteration, but goddamn. When I squint, I can see the inv individual particles of dust swirling in the air. Ten, mi ten minutes have gone by. I still haven't written anything. Everybody else is writing. I'm not. I can't. Why? I reach for my pen. My palms are slick with sweat. I bet Lynn's having no problems with this paper. She's in the high set for maths, and though I've never seen any of her work, I'm sure she's a straight-A student. She's just that sort of girl. I wonder where she is. I glance about the gym's 
surreptitiously, but not because I want to cheat. I'm not brave enough for that, but because I'm curious. We're seen in alphabetical order. My last name is Harper. Lens is at Aitken. She'll be further ahead of me, maybe to the right? Ah, there. I can see her. Oh, there's a glitch there. She's pretty far away, but I can see her clearly. Her hair falls around her shoulders in shimmering waves. She pauses, her pen still poised in her right hand, and glances upwards. Maybe she's staring at the window. Is she so confident in her own abilities that she doesn't need to focus on the exam paper? I shift and rub my thighs together. I'm sweating. Why is it so hot today? It must be because there are so many sweaty, stinking human bodies crammed together in this room! Sorry. I didn't- it didn't feel that hot when I was waiting for the train. Lukewarm more than anything. The nightmare surfaces to my mind once more. I'm an alarmingly vivid detail. It gets clearer and clearer the more I will do f the more I will for it to go away, like the legs of a spider slowly emerging from the sinkhole. Lynn's hands against my cheeks, her lips against mine. The sudden intense burning, my eyes melting out of my skull. Gross. I draw in a sharp breath and grit my teeth together. I can't focus on my exam paper. It's all nonsense to me. Just numbers that have no meaning and blank spaces to show my work when I can't work anything out at all. I don't understand a thing. All I can do is stare at the back of Lynn's, he of Lynn's, Lynn's head. What's going to happen when I reach 100% stress? Half an hour has, has elapsed. Oh my god. How long have I been recording? 11 minutes? Okay. I want to see what happens. Lynn is looking back down at her exam paper. Her slender fingers turn over a new page. Her emotions are so casual they almost feel insulting. Is she trying to make me feel bad? No. Probably not. I doubt she even knows I exist. My stomach hurts. Oh no. I hate her. I really, really hate that girl. If only she would disappear. Then none of this would be happening. Everything would be so much better if she had never been born. <gasps> 100% stress! I don't remember closing my exam booklet. Oh no. I think I'm gonna leave this off for the next episode, actually. So, that being said, if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see what the fuck happens next, then leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. Share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye bye